Recently, Morocco has been making all the headlines and not for the best reasons. Historically, they've had several controversial stances, but the recent hits a lot closer to home. This concerns the country's response to the aftermath of the coups in Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso, which as you'd expect, have piqued global interest, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa. Despite its historical and cultural complexities, which have occasionally led to misconceptions about its identity in the African context, Morocco's decisive actions have challenged preconceived notions. The country's unexpected geopolitical positioning amid shifting alliances and the departure of certain African nations, such as Nigeria, has sparked concern. Despite being an African country, Morocco's complex cultural ties, which include a lighter skin tone and the prevalence of Arabic, have occasionally clouded its portrayal in the African narrative. However, recent genetic studies confirm Moroccans and Black Africans' shared ancestry, emphasizing their intrinsic connections and shared heritage. Following the recent military coups in Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso, the economic community of West African states imposed sanctions to address political instability. However, these sanctions have had the unintended consequence of disrupting trade and preventing these landlocked countries from accessing ports. With no direct access to seaports, the sanctions have hampered their ability to import and export goods, harming their economies and causing humanitarian crisis. The trade suspension caused by the sanctions has resulted in rising prices for necessities such as food and fuel, empty store shelves, and severe supply chain disruptions. The economic downturn has resulted in widespread job losses and income instability, adding to the financial strain on ordinary citizens who are already struggling with tight budgets. These ramifications highlight the harsh realities that these countries face as a result of their landlocked geographic location, as well as the unintended consequences of regional sanctions imposed in response to political unrest. The humanitarian challenges caused by disrupted trade and economic strain have exacerbated food insecurity by raising prices and disrupting critical supply chains, affecting vulnerable communities in the region. Restricted access to healthcare and education exacerbates the crisis by jeopardizing citizens' health and future prospects, particularly for children. These sanctions, while intended to address political instability, have the potential to exacerbate populist discontent and impede diplomatic engagement with transitional governments, stifling progress towards stability and democratic transitions. Prolonged instability may create a breeding ground for extremist groups, posing broader security risks to the Sahel region. In contrast to the negative consequences of the sanctions, Morocco's King Mohammed VI proposed a transformative initiative on the 48th anniversary of the Green March. He promised Sahel country's road, port, and rail infrastructure, as well as an international initiative to provide sub-Saharan African nations with access to the Atlantic Ocean. This offer seeks to fundamentally transform economies not only in Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso, but across the Sahel region. Direct access to the Atlantic Ocean could lower transportation costs, streamline trade, and attract foreign investment, boosting economic growth and resilience. King Mohammed VI emphasized the significance of a maritime economy in promoting regional and global economic integration. Improved connectivity to the global economy through improved infrastructure and access to Atlantic ports has the potential to spur regional integration and economic cooperation in the Sahel and West Africa. The initiative's impact is expected to go beyond just economics, potentially promoting development and poverty reduction. Direct access to ports reduces import costs for critical goods, relieving inflationary pressures, and making essential items more affordable to citizens. The development of port infrastructure not only generates job opportunities, but it also stimulates local economies, thereby reducing poverty. It also encourages foreign investment in industries such as manufacturing, which boosts economic growth and promotes regional development. The strategic value of direct access to Atlantic ports extends beyond economic benefits. It reduces reliance on neighboring countries for critical imports, increasing strategic autonomy and possibly lowering political pressures. This development could pave the way for greater maritime security cooperation and participation in global initiatives, thereby bolstering regional stability 
by addressing threats like piracy and trafficking. King Mohammed VI's emphasis on the maritime economy, which includes offshore resources, marine fishing, and renewable energy, demonstrates the possibility of multifaceted growth. The initiative, supported by foreign ministers from Niger, Burkina Faso, Mali, and Chad, demonstrates a shared commitment to infrastructure development and integration, emphasizing its critical role in promoting stability and prosperity in the Sahel. The memorandum issued following the meeting praised Morocco's commitment to providing critical infrastructure, such as roads, ports, and rail systems, to increase the Sahel nation's participation in international trade. Diplomats from Mali, Niger, Burkina Faso, and Chad agreed to form national task forces in their respective countries to help implement this initiative, demonstrating their shared commitment to realizing King Mohammed VI's transformative vision. Morocco's Foreign Minister Nasser Barida, along with his counterparts from Sahel nations, emphasized the collaborative approach required for the Atlantic Ocean Access Initiative, highlighting its potential to drive regional integration and economic transformation, ultimately improving the quality of life for their populations. The Mohammed VI Foundation for Sustainable Development widened the scope of this initiative by establishing humanitarian programs such as a prenatal clinic in Bamako, Mali. Landlocked Sahel nations such as Mali, Niger, Burkina Faso, and Chad have welcomed and supported Morocco's Atlantic Initiative, describing it as an important step toward improving access to the Atlantic coast. During a meeting hosted by Morocco's foreign minister, the countries expressed gratitude for the initiative's alignment with their economic and social development objectives. Foreign Minister Burida emphasized Morocco's commitment to assisting its Sahel counterparts by providing infrastructure access for mutual prosperity, emphasizing the role of investment-driven partnerships and education in long-term development. The participating countries announced the formation of task forces to carry out the initiative, with Mali and Burkina Faso's foreign ministers expressing strong support, seeing it as an opportunity to leverage their landlocked status and take a step toward continental transformation. Mali, Niger, Burkina Faso, and Chad praised Morocco's initiative to provide critical infrastructure support to landlocked Sahel nations, including roads, ports, and rail systems. The collaborative effort, highlighted at a meeting hosted by Morocco's foreign minister Nasser Barida, emphasized the Atlantic Access Initiative as a transformative step. The formation of national task forces to carry out this initiative demonstrated a common commitment to achieving King Mohammed the sixth vision of economic integration and Sa'al people empowerment. The Mohammed the sixth Foundation for Sustainable Development increased the initiative's impact through humanitarian programs, such as a prenatal clinic in Bamako, Mali. These countries' support and gratitude highlighted Morocco's commitment to assisting its Sahel counterparts for mutual benefit. Barida emphasized that investment-focused collaborations and education are critical for long-term growth, so the initiative aligns with their socio-economic development objectives. The joint announcement to form task forces is a collective step toward implementation, with Mali and Burkina Faso strongly supporting the initiative. Seeing it as a way to leverage their landlocked status for continental transformation and a chance for socioeconomic progress across the Sahel region. The initiative is a win win approach to South South cooperation, with Morocco serving as a symbolic partner to its sub Saharan neighbors. The Moroccan king acknowledged the effectiveness of Moroccan diplomacy in strengthening the country's position and countering adversaries' maneuvers. The emphasis is still on sustaining development and modernization policies, particularly in the Moroccan Sahara. The rehabilitation of the national coastline, particularly the Atlantic bordering Morocco's Sahara, is critical to transforming the region into an African and global hub for human interaction and economic integration. Hicham Modethead, a strategic and international affairs expert, emphasized the strategic importance of establishing Morocco's Atlantic coast as a geopolitical reference point for African development and collaboration, particularly with the Sahel and Sahara countries. This emphasis is consistent with Morocco's vision of South-South cooperation, which values collaboration and shared development over security and military measures. King Mohammed VI proposed an international initiative 
to provide a Sahel country with access to the Atlantic Ocean, acknowledging the region's need for improved infrastructure. Morocco's recent investments in southern regions, such as the Dakla Atlantic Port and the Tiznit Dakla Highway, demonstrate the country's commitment to economic development. The Moroccan Sahara, according to the King's vision, is a dynamic and strategic space where African, American, and European nations can collaborate on Atlantic development. So, can Morocco's diplomacy and economic cooperation unite all African countries? Despite being viewed as more Arab than Foucault, Morocco recognizes its responsibility to unite Africa, resolve internal conflicts, and strengthen the continent. In this regard, the Moroccan king recognizes that strong infrastructure is essential for increasing trade, economic growth, and overall development. China exemplifies this, as it uses development to broaden its influence. The Moroccan strategy for regional integration is inspired by new generation regional processes like APEC and the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership CPTPD. These initiatives take a pragmatic and gradual partnership approach, focusing on functional collaboration areas that produce immediate measurable results. The proposed strategy prioritizes tangible results without delaying long-term goals. The carefully chosen domains have the potential to deliver tangible results. Furthermore, given dwindling resources due to over-exploitation and open-door policies for foreign investors, these projects address infrastructure bottlenecks impeding African state development, particularly in the Atlantic and landlocked Sahel regions. This approach is founded on open regionalism, which is inclusive, emphasizing the importance of fostering synergies and forming partnerships with other initiatives and collaborative endeavors involving countries from both the Atlantic and other regions, such as the Sahel and the North Atlantic. Morocco's Atlantic African States Process, AASP, has a streamlined institutional structure that includes a permanent secretariat and focal points, lowering financial costs and potential conflicts. Large infrastructure projects, such as ports, railways, and highways, have enormous transformative potential for international economies, similar to China's Belt and Road Initiative, which promotes connectivity. The Atlantic Initiative seeks to improve African connectivity while also promoting trade, economic growth, and development. Developed infrastructure makes a country more appealing to investors, facilitates trade, and boosts global competitiveness. While Morocco and South Africa excel in many integration dimensions, trade integration and free movement of people could be improved. The institutional framework, led by Morocco, aims to create trade opportunities, particularly for landlocked Sahel countries such as Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso. Despite the sanctions, this initiative provides an opportunity for cooperation, potentially reducing tensions and promoting mutual growth among African nations. The shift toward African countries making their own decisions demonstrates the potential for unity, regardless of skin color, in supporting fellow African nations. This initiative may reduce external influences while promoting African unity and mutual growth. Encouragements and opinions on whether Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso can overcome their recent crisis, particularly after Morocco's assistance, are welcome in the comments section. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.